Good morning, everybody. It's David here with Becker Art, and we are going to do a early, early, early demo. Sorry about that, but I've got to go to a workshop right after this. Yeah, I'm taking Don Andrew's workshop in Lake Zurich at Main Street Gallery, and it's been a great two days. And so we're going to be going back after right after this. Normally it starts at nine, so normally I do these at nine, but today we're going to be doing it at seven. And I know there's probably nobody watching, but that's okay. You can watch it later. And um, we're going to be doing this little figurative work. And I always um, said that his book on Don Andrews' book on enhancing the figure in watercolor was the only book when I was going to school that was about doing watercolor and the figure. And so I love that book. And it was so neat to be able to take his workshop here in Lake Zurich this, this week or these last two days. And this is the third day. And so I, I decided to do um, yesterday he did a nice lady um, just in in a just a beautiful painting and so I want to tell you a couple of things that he had done that I've already learned and I don't care how good you think you are or how um, as an artist it's kind of neat because you get to do this for the rest of your life you know and you can always learn always learn it's like you never are stopping learning and so I don't care how good you think you are you can take workshops from all, anybody and everybody and you'll learn you know it's just really neat and I'm going to be, some of his learnings and teachings, I'm going to be teaching in my class now because I just find them to be amazing. One of them was um, the three bearers um, for design. And I can't say it right now, but um, it's really a neat way of um, analyzing how to do design in your work. But anyways, let's get going with this thing so I can get done and get over there. <laughs> and so, um, well, cheers, everybody. I, I got to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> All right. And so... It's neat because he talks about his colors and you can go on. I was just, I was a little late here <clears throat> because I was watching one of his videos online. If you go to um, donandrewsstudio.com and then there's one one video in this thing that's called um, Antigua um, Chapel or something like that and it talks about color. And he basically he uses six colors, um, a limited palette and and to teach and it's really cool and so what i want to do is i'm gonna start with my lights of course i always start with my lights but the way he puts it down he'll put down a cool and then he'll put a warm on it when he's doing his figures some of his smaller figures i'm not sure um about his i'm sure it's the same way with things so i'm gonna start with my lights and my lights are basically the front of her shirt and her the front of her face the top of the hat you know the background's darker and so if you squint your eye, and I didn't have time to make it a black and white and a tan, um, so I'm just looking at the image right now, and I'm squinting my eye, and I'm looking, and I'm seeing that this part right here, so I'll go in there. And he also, um, he likes Naples yellow, and uh, that, that together with um, fuchsia or opera make a great, great color for skin. You know, it's a really great color for skin that he uses. And so I'm just going to do the front of her shirt, which is basically white, but there is a little bit of, a little bit of gray. And so he said, get two reds, two blues, and two yellows, um, just a dark and a, and a light of that, you know, and that's a really, you know, I'm going to try that next time. I'm not going to do it here today, but, um, cause this has been a really fast thing. I, I got to do it early. I know that, like I said, probably nobody will watching, right? I'm sure nobody's up at this hour doing it, <laughs> watching a video, but you can watch it later. Oh, there's three of you. Oh, thanks. Thanks for waking up. <laughs> and so I'm going to go in here now and just kind of put my, my warms lights and even in here <clears throat> in the light area going to put a little bit of my my violet and he talks about the three primary colors and then um, just mixing them together to get your other colors yeah, let me think let me think this is the plate so I'm basically putting in my light colors you know and, and also when you're working in a workshop um, you're always going to have yourself that you things you've learned already <clears throat> that you're gonna be doing you always do those things first because that's the way you learn how to do things and then you apply it to that what you already know you know and it's really kind of neat to you know do you're not going to stop doing what you do you know i'm going to keep on working light to light to dark and all those type of things but 
other things that you learn in a workshop, you'll then apply to what you're already doing. And some things you won't. Some things because it just don't fit your kind of style. Or the nicest thing about taking a workshop is that a lot of us instructors say the same thing, but we just say it in a different way. And sometimes it's nicer to hear it in a different way because it makes more sense. You know, everybody um, speaks differently about what they what they know and um, some of their exercises and stuff really work to your advantage if you try to take other people and just see. You know, and it's not even about how they paint, um, but it's how they teach. Because teachers, a lot of times, will not, they teach the way they teach and they paint the way they paint. You know, it's not, sometimes it doesn't correspond with each other because they're, they may have done something for so long in a certain way that they don't even know how they're doing that. So anyways, but um, it's really, you know, take workshops and take a bunch of different people. I always tell my students that just, you know, you don't take me all the time because, you know, you're going to only be, you know, that knowledge of that I know, uh, but take others, other teachers, you know, and take a bunch of teachers and they'll develop into your own style. And now see, again, my doing my lights and I'm just, he likes to put cools into his warms too. Like when you're doing a big wash and he does a lot of floating my pigment, he doesn't call it floating your pigment like I do, but he does a lot of floating your pigment where you're putting down the water and soft and hard edges he talks all about that <coughs> excuse me hey maria <laughs> you're up already <laughs> maria's in my class or not my class in, <laughs> in don's class maria's doing some great stuff with her um she's done more of the um exercises the small exercises instead of paintings doing original paintings and so he puts down like a wash and then he'll put um like blue like a light blue into it and it's neat that um the blue makes the makes the warm warmer you know and it's really neat how that works so you put down the blue and then you put down the again he uses naples yellow with um opera to make a great flesh tone color and so these are the light parts again i'm doing the light parts first and so the front of her face I am going to keep some of her face white, and so I'm just going to not touch those areas. And he talks a lot about, um, yesterday we talked a lot about not so many hard edges, like softening those, softening those edges. So like in here, I'm going to take again, I'll take the blue. I'll take some blue, and he has a lot more blues than I use. Um, but today I'm going to see if I can't use some of those blues that he reuses. So I'll put this wash in there. And he'll take the the opera and the and the fuchsia or opera and Naples yellow. And he, he says going slowly like this and then putting in and then putting in those soft edges. Like and that's I'm gonna show you something that really is amazing that I learned from him is that you when you soften an edge, you go in with the water for, into it and don't take it right on there hold on I, I don't have that part yet to do that but i'll show you that in a second show you that in a second so i'm putting in the the cool colors and then you can put the the warm color right on top of that and that's so cool because it really works it really works Yeah, he does work at an angle. He works it upright and not flat like this. And so they just kind of fall into each other. This light. Yeah, the blending, how the blends, the colors blend themselves together. And that's how, what I've always talked about is, um, you know, wet in the wet and blending. It's one of the things I've I kind of talked about a lot in my classes and, um, it just it shows that we all say things differently, but do the same thing. And you're always going to do what you do. I mean, that's something that you, 
you will always do because that's the way you learn. I mean, you when you learn from other art, other teachers and you pick everything up and you, you t use it for a little bit and then you basically, oh, here, I'm going to show you the edge. Let me, so I don't forget. So this edge right here now is just dry paper. So it's a hard edge, right? So in, and I'm just going to go in here. Let me make this a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in here and put a little bit more blue in there. I mean, I really love this blue, putting the blue into the, into the dark and then, um, putting the, the flesh tone over that, you know, it just kind of falls together. I'm going to make her ear a little bit warmer. And so this edge right here, and I always say the cheeks have to be rosy. So get them nice and rosy, the cheeks. And as I'm doing this, watch this. So he'll take he'll take his brush and wet it and then tap it, tap it on something, on paper towel. I got to bring a towel in this today. And instead of hitting right here, you you start out here with clean water and you bring it into the into the hard edge. Instead of hitting the hard edge, you take clean water and you hit it from the outside and let it just bleed out into that area. Such a great um, suggestion. Such a great lesson. Because you have the hard edge, and look at how soft that edge is, see? And then I, all I did was take the water from here and take it into that area. <clears throat> I used to take it the other way. I just go right on top of it, but then you just keep on making that line wider. And such, I mean, that's the price of the mission was just that alone. This is great. And so I'm going in here. And then this whole bottom part is all um, soft edged and right right in our lips here the cup is a little bit lighter so i'm gonna go around that and then the bottom of her neck chin here is nice and nice and light and so i'm going to go to that spot and now i'm gonna make this part darker and i'm gonna use my blue first i kind of i actually this is um you know the forehead is usually yellower Cheeks are rosy, cheeks are rosy. And then down here is usually grayer, but because I'm, it's lit up from the bottom here, I'm gonna use some pink. And then I love this, this blue in the background here. This is so cool. I'm just gonna keep on putting different dark values back there. And let me um, now put my my actual color of the hair, which is warm. And so I'm going to take that and put it right over the blue. And the, a couple of strands are down. I'm going to rub, rub them out because I can because I'm using Stonehenge Aqua. So the paper lets me rub out. And a little bit on her face right here. Oh, too much. I'm using a pretty big round brush for this, but... Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's get a little bit darker over here. Hey, Karen. So here we're going down. Kind of using a purple together with the orange and the blues underneath that. And again, all the all those colors blend themselves together, and that's what's so cool. I sh probably should be doing this on an angle, so it would it does it on its own. But I haven't. I didn't prepare for that. Next time, and a little bit of the warmth in here. Her neck is nice and dark. And like he says, it take you know you take a long time because it's all nice and wet, right? And so you can take a while to do this. You don't have to do it all so fast. Because it's wet, and um, that edge trick, we're going to do that again, hopefully soon. Because I really that that right, like I said, I love that trick, and I'm not sure why I never taught students to do that because I never did that. I, I kind of go right in the edge and just wet it, right? But it works so much better that way, the way he did it. And the collar is going to be a little bit lighter and then go down here a 
the, the like the detail in the nose and stuff like that. I'm gonna get that later. You know, that's in the detail stage. I'm still doing my lights to darks, and actually, I'm kind of putting my light darks in there right now. And I'm, I'm kind of getting them them together right now. Let's go to the top of the hat. Let's, I'm gonna start out again with the blue. Just gonna wet it here. And I love how he'll take and just soften an edge just to soften it, you know, just to keep it so that it's not all hard edged, which, you know, again, I tell you that I talk about that a lot. And um, it's just neat to hear it from somebody else saying that, that how, you know, how important that is to lose your edges, lose your edges, soft edges. You would never think to put blue underneath first, you know, but it just really works well. And I love the hands of yellow. That's going to be my to go to yellow now. Um, it's an uh, again, it's kind of opaque, and um, he knows that. You know, we we have opaque colors in our thing, but you don't have to use them opaquely. Is that a word? Opaquely, <laughs> you can use them. Um, you can use them by just making them making them a lot of water and making them transparent. So I put too much water in there. Now it's going to be a watermark. Darn it. I hit it so nicely done. Why did I touch that? All right, now let's get her hand. Same thing. I'm going to start with the blue. There's a lot of blue and right in here. I'm going to take my fuchsia. He calls it fuchsia and Naples yellow. And then I'm just going to go in here and... Get the nice dark. A little warmth right here. The reason I did a portrait today is because that's the book of his that I had that he signed for me yesterday was the book that when I was in school, man, I that was like a Bible to me. I just would do all the pictures in there and just really loved that book. And um need to see now how he does it. And and he did a little uh, kind of a portrait yesterday too, a figure drawing he did. And it just made me like, oh, I just love that whole style of putting washes together as one and letting it all just bleed together. And yeah, see what I, I totally ruined that right there. I'm gonna have to go back in because now there's a line right there. But this part's dry and this part's wet, and so I was just wait and do that later. Now I'll go down here, right through there. Let that bleed right into this area. Get the shadowing. Go right into this dress. This dress is very patterned, and um, he did a really cool. He does a really cool pattern. But I'm gonna do it on top of the um, the original. You can just stick a rolled up towel, even the pencil case under the back of the thing and angle. Yeah, but this, I don't have, this is just a piece of paper. And so um, for the video, I've got to keep it flat just for now, but I will, I'm going to, I'm going to put, use a board again and then put it underneath there. But for this, I just got to do it the way I'm doing it right now. So this is a light area, but I'm going to do first do this, the light area and put that in there. And let's put a little bit of that blue. His colors, I mean, I just love his colors. And he's, he's so many colors and when he's, when he's doing his work. Which is kind of like what I've got there. I mean, you get all those blues and, and oranges and yellows all together. It's it's pretty neat. Let's see. This goes there. Yeah, 
Yeah, I like, the thing I like about this Naples yellow is is that it is kind of opaque looking, which is what I do a lot of. A lot of my paints in my palette are very opaque, but when you're using them wet into wet, they're not opaque. They're um, very transparent, and they give more of a pastel kind of color, which I like. Then we have this, this is a, a, some, a bunch of flowers here, and so we'll put some green in there. But a green that is made up with these colors, it's not going to be a green made up from other colors. He really talks about that. Like you you use the colors that are on your palette, basically, those six colors, and don't bring in a color that's not part of those 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 colors that you're using. So the hands of yellow, make your that with the blues that you're using, and that'll be your green, because then it'll match, because you're using those colors to make your to make your colors and they'll, and they'll harmonize <clears throat> so I'm using ultramarine is what I'm using for my blue I'm gonna write down today when I go I'm gonna write down all of this he has his color palette on his website if you go look it's on there and again it's um, donandrewsstudio.com and if you go to the video section there or just keep on going down there's a couple of free videos one of a zoom and he talked about that about his colors and it's free and he's also just started a patreon um what is that called um classes that you can um get once a month and stuff and so sign up for that watch this soft edge thing again i just love this <laughs> watch 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 so you make it hard edged this and so this hard edge right here but if you want to make something soft like i'm going to go up here well now it's wet already so you get it soft but you pull in clean water and i should be i'm going to start do using i only have one container here i'm going to start getting one container of clear water for these purposes so you take the clean water out here you know away from the um, hard edge and then you let and then you pull it into that area so you go like this put it right outside there and then you hit it right here and then it'll turn that soft so again this will go of course is already wet so you can't see it there what i'm talking about but then you, you get a lot of granulation this way too i mean i love the granulation in watercolor and i'm gonna take my orange and my blue again and i'm gonna do the design into this um dress with the I'm gonna make the soft edge because i do like soft edges well i'm actually gonna have to do that hard edge because that's really part of the dress is this pattern on her dress i do have to make things a little bit darker Boy, I, I really love this hands of yellow because it really uh, makes makes colors really uh, most of the yellows I've always used are just way too strong and this is just not that strong so it just really looks great when you're using it especially with the fuchsia to make the flesh tones oh my god I just love it here's a short foreshortened finger Get just some of the lights I just started using the yellow. Let's see what that says. How come it, there's always a heart in front of it? All right, so see how what happened there? I got one part was not as that, so I'll show you how to fix that. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the background right now. Let me first put a little bit of light through here too. So the background, um, it's just a gray background, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to make it a warm background since she's kind of cool. I'm going to make it a warm background. I wonder what he would do. I'm going to have to ask him that. <laughs> That's one of those questions I, I'm going to ask him when I get there. Like the background colors. 
So I'm going to go opposite. What this is blue, so I'm going to go with uh, something warm. He talks a lot about opposites. You know, using the opposite color, the opposite tone, light and dark. That's his negative painting, uh, when you're negative painting. And getting some of these, see, that's a hard edge all the way. He would just, on some parts, just let that be wet, so it just becomes a soft edge. And so this is lighter than the hat, so I'm just going to put this in there. There's the hands of yellow. You hit parts of it, so then everything's hard edged. Grays, he likes grays. He's definitely into grays. See, when you have that wet and you hit the point, uh, then um, to make it soft, then it'll bleed into that and you won't extend it. So when you have a hard edge line and you're trying to um, um, soften it, when you're softening it right on the line, it makes the line farther out. But if you let the water come into it, it makes it much better because then you're you soften it right at that point where you want it to be. Let me get a little bit darker when I get to this point. I'm going to the blues. It's so much fun. Yeah, I'm having so much fun this week. I did have my class yesterday, which um, so I didn't wasn't there in the morning when he was talking about different lighting effects on the figure. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take somebody's picture of their. I'm gonna, I have Maria. She probably has. You probably have the what he did yesterday written down. So I'm gonna take a picture of it, and so I don't. I remember it was like silhouette. It was silhouette. It was top light. Backlight. Um, what other kind of lights were there? <laughs> there was four of them. Four different kind of lighting situations that he uses. Very interesting. Hey, Kathy. Good morning. I'm going to make this warm right here. Again, right by his face. Right her face. Even though in the picture it's just dark. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it like... Warm there, I think. I think that'll be okay. The front of her nose is very um, light, white, so I'm gonna. I didn't use masking fluid, but I'm just going right up against it. Thanks for watching me this early, guys. This is I know it's way too early. <laughs> I almost was late, and I was like, look, it's laying in bed. I'm like, oh, man, I got to get up. <laughs> See, just, I love the colors, how they blend themselves together. And this is a little bit high, higher key than the photo, but, uh, you know, it's, it's it still is fine because... The parts that are lighter and darker are enough to show which part is light and which is dark. It doesn't have to be as dark as the picture. You just need to make sure that your darks and lights stand apart. And they do with color. And I'm also using color um, warmth and cools to make it look like that. And now to fix her face, I'm going to have to wait till that totally dries and then go back in there and get rid of that cut mark on her cheek. <laughs> I'll do that when I'm doing the, the face. Right here, I'll go in here and I'm gonna make this a bluer value here. That way, I'll make her cheek, her chin pop out a little bit. There's a lot of water in here, so it looks dark right now, but there's a lot of water in there. It will, it will definitely get lighter in here. I'm going to suck some of it out with a thirsty brush. Take a little bit of blue and put it down in there. And whatever's on this side of the hand has to be on that side. So I always say that when on, on two sides of things, they've got to be the same. Otherwise, it looks like there's a wall dividing that or something. So I always kind of put those together as the same. All right, 
right now let's just do her let's get some warmth in the flowers down here what's the, oh this is i didn't didn't do this part I'm gonna keep this cool down here so that you don't see anything that you just don't look down here I don't want it to be a bright color I would definitely want it to be gray I want you to look in the corner here so you just soften that and gray it up a little bit it can still be warm or cool but I, I don't want it to be too boy I'm using a lot of water today All right, smaller brush now. Let me get her face done. So that's her center of interest. And so we're going to go in there with the flesh tone, which is Naples and Fuchsia Opera. And I'm um, just going to start out small, detail stage. I'm going to go in here and just work it so that I'm going to get my soft and hard edges where they're supposed to be. And I'm going to, again, take my brush and um, take water and put it away from where I want it to be the hard edge. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Hold on. See how it's a hard edge? This is dry, so I'm getting hard edges. But as soon as I wet it, the, the, I'm going to wet it beyond there a little bit. Well, here I can't because there's... I'm going to put my finger in there. So you wet not don't wet the edge wet be beyond the edge a little bit so that it softens it pulls it up in the little area and this is a pretty small area here so it's still though i'm taking it away don't touch the uh, take the water away from it here a little bit and then slowly bring it to that part and then just let it bleed like i said that was the best um <laughs> lesson i've ever gotten i think for softening an edge I don't know why I never did that. It's kind of weird. You think about it, it's like such an obvious thing that you don't, if you put it right on the line of water, of course you're going to make the, extend the line a little bit more, where this doesn't extend the line so much. And then the shadow is warm here. I'm just going to put a little shadow right there. And look at how bright she's looking, how light. I love that. And then the eye color and the things in there will be a little bit darker, but I have to wait for that to dry because I want that to be a hard edge. Now all these little light, um, I'm going to rub them out. If I need a light little hairs, I'm going to rub it out because this paper, you can do that. This is the Stonehenge Aqua. So rubbing out is very simple, very easy to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-wet this area now because I, I'm going to redo this part down here. And so I'm doing it first with getting my hard edges. I don't need to get soft edges yet. I'm just going to go down here, work this. Work this area. Wet it as I go along. I'm wetting as I go along. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those soft edges afterwards. See how you can just redo something? You just re-wet it and no big deal. And then here that, I'm gonna soften this line a little bit. And I'm also gonna use opaques. I'm gonna use some opaque colors to get my, to get my darks. There's no problem with that. I have no problem with that. How much time do we have? Oh, not too much. No. Yeah, still got plenty of time. So we're going to go to darks here. My work when I'm with him is a lot more transparent than when I'm working lately. 
And notice I'm getting really thick with my paints and um, not, not as try as transparent. And it's kind of nice to be able to go back to being a little bit more transparent with my colors. Even though I use some a lot of opaque colors too. Soften this a little lighter up here. And then there's this shadow, a warm shadow. It kind of goes right up here. I'm not sure what that's from. Something out here is, is showing a dark shadow coming right up here. And our hair has to be a lot darker in some spots, so I'll do that in a second. I'm just looking around to what else I need to do. Let's start doing some of her dress. Some of the now it's dry, and so now I can go in there and get some of the pattern. And I'm gonna make it very transparent, and so I'm not gonna use much. I mean, more of a tint of color, and I'm just gonna try to fake a little bit of the pattern that's on the dress. So a lot of water in my brush, and so I don't. I want it to be transparent but I want to be able to see through it a little bit. So not too dark. I know it's really dark in the picture, but I still want to keep that transparency. So I'm just going to make it so that it's transparent, more of a, a, a tint instead of a wash. It washes a lot of pigment. I'm just making it, just making kind of a pattern. I'm not sure if I'm getting this right, this pattern, but and I don't draw in the pattern. That's just too, it's too detailed for me. Just the pattern to put it on there. Hey, Marianne. Little buttons. That's a little bit too dark. So that first wash was very light, you know, like I do my first washes. But also, I put a lot of darks in there right away. So it's a little bit of step one and step two, all both together as one. And here we have the pattern that goes into the light area. So the, the blue that I will go into the light area should be a little bit lighter. So more water. I can just use a little bit more water. And the pattern over here. Just kind of make it lighter because it's in the light. So... darker where it's inside the inside the shadow would be darker pattern but still a lot of paint I mean a lot of water not a lot of paint not my paint not much paint at all but as a matter of fact maybe use a little bit of Prussian blue there I didn't get a chance to watch this video yet on color but I did find it right before I found it right before I got on here and so I'm gonna be watching it it's a it's a zoom meeting that he had done He told us to watch that um, yesterday in class, so I didn't get a chance to watch it. Maybe I'll watch it right after this real quickly. <laughs> so I'm not sure if doing the pattern now is should you do the face first, but I don't think it really matters like step by step how what you do first and second and third. I don't think that matters so much. As long as you go light to dark. Like I haven't done the... See, there's a pattern on the front of her, in front of her blouse too. So, but first I'm gonna get the look of, this is the collar. And some darks. Now when you do these pattern here, they have to be really, really light. So a lot, a lot of water. Lots and lots of water. Because you can barely see. Oh, see, that's way too much. But there's a lot of water in there, so I'm just going to go in here. That's just a white cuff. Maybe there's some connected 
connected parts that stay a little bit darker than the go right to light. Until I'm getting, I, I don't, I don't last very long to do details. I'm not a big detail person. So I'm kind of rushing this part now. With that, look how nice that looks. And here I'm just squiggling. Let me get a nice big dark in here. Look at the granulation I got from the wash. Isn't that nice? Man. So let's see. I take the blue. Let's take some fuchsia. Look at that nice fuchsia. I know it's not a plant color, but I want it to be colorful. There's a green. And there's a really dark, dark down here. Take a dark blue, mix a little bit of orange to it, dull it down. This is really dark down here. It goes right into there and some of the... Out of focus. When you don't want to see something, wet it and get it out of focus. All right, last but not least, let's do our face. Her hair. Let me do her hair first. It's a big area. And so I'm going to get a nice dark, dark color here. Go right up to their hair. Okay, just make this dark. And you notice how I'm using um, a cool color in her red hair. Which is something I would never have done before. But um, boy, now I, I, I see the value of it. It's very important to get some cool colors into the worm to make the worms look better and cooler. And uh, warmer, I should say. Warm, cool colors make your warm colors look warmer. And so, um, put them in there. This is a soft edge. Again, how do you do the soft edges? You put the water here and then bleed it into the area. And then it'll just pull it in. It'll pull it over. Such a great, such a great, you keep, I'm gonna keep on talking about that for weeks from now on. What a great way of softening your edges when you're on, on a hard edge. And here's your earring, put a little earring in here. Got red lips that are on the cup right here. Let me give her blue eyes. Or it should be hazel, right? Blue eyes, so there's a shadow underneath here. And then it's basically a shadow. From, the, from our eyelid onto her eye. And you can see a little bit of a color of her eye right here. A little bit of it, you see. And nostrils you should always make warm. Don't make them cool because they'll look dirty. I was taught that in, in painting class at the academy when we were doing nostrils. They always said to make them, make them warm.
darker back here. Wow, the lines of the hair and how do they, how do the lines go with the hair? Because you're basically just following those lines. And I'm going to put some white paint in when it comes to the really highlight of them. I'll just take pure orange for her little strands. And I put these extra strands here on my own because um, there were none. But I thought it'd be nice coming out this way a little bit. Let's make the tray a little bit darker. Let's put a cool on the, on the plate, on the saucer. hand see that I didn't I'm gonna wash that off a little bit because that got that was a hard edge that I'm gonna try to get rid of afterwards because I didn't do that what I was supposed to do soften the edge inside the ear again make it make it warm that Cool. Otherwise, when you're making it cool in the shadows, it looks dirty. It looks like they have dirty ears. So use a warm dark. darker in here and then we're almost done right it's almost time I'm gonna head out right away get up there so I'm just basically in my detail stage now just getting all the details in there much happening down here it's like too too much contrast and such and so I, my eye is really going down and there's this mess down here so I'm just gonna wet it and just make it all soft edged wet it and just let it be nothing I don't want to have all this, this stuff down here to make you look down there maybe a little bit of it but not as much as I have it, too many hard edges down here so soften it up I can have a few but I need to have this so you don't look down there so much. It looks so messy. I'm just gonna soften it, I wet it, and just let it let it bleed it, it into it into itself. Make it more soft edged, out of focus. And that can be done anywhere on your painting. If you feel like sometimes it's just too much. I've using that hake brush sometimes to soften an edge too. You can just soften it really nicely. Let's get it really bright. Oh, on our, on our cup, there's a bunch of um, things in our cup. Just with little dots and there's some green. Or right, I'm gonna use blue little lines. She's got, a, she's got a nice teacup. I think. 
think well you can in my screen I cannot see that I have actually got stuff in this in this part of the blouse that you really can't see in my photo on the screen on my monitor I can't see the little things I have here but it's there All right. I think I'm going to leave it at that, unless you guys see something. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of white, and I don't have my gouache set here, but this is watercolor white. And it'll work just as fine. It's titanium. Pick up a little bit of that's dry. The white is a little bit drier than the regular watercolors, um, so you have to wet it a little bit more to rejuvenate it. I'm just going to hit a couple of spots to get it nice. I pretty much got what's supposed to be there. Bottom of her eyes light, it's already light. Maybe some hairs, these hairs right here. Couple little hairs, just a couple little, little lights on the hair. My signature go right here. Do a couple little flowers here, just a couple little Naples and fuchsia opera. A couple little petals of that. It's all wet, so you're not going to see anything, unfortunately. I'll have to wait for that to dry, but I may put a couple little light things in there. Let's see what if we just do pure Naples. All right, that's it. I think that's it. I think we had enough fun. <laughs> oh, I actually didn't have the picture up for you guys today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot, I totally forgot that. Let me put it there right now just so you can see what, it, what I was painting. Oh, boy, can't believe I didn't do that. So this is what I was painting, guys. Sorry, I didn't have it up there. It was early. It was a little bit too early, but there's what I was painting. <laughs> well, maybe it was good that you didn't see that because look at how contrasty it is and how light mine is, but... That's what I wanted. I wanted to be in this hand I'm looking at now, and that's really, 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 yeah, it's right there. All right, that's good. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Sorry for making it so early, but I got to go to class now <laughs> and learn a little bit more. And there's a little bit of reflection right there, but... But thanks again. Thanks, and um, so this coming Thursday, I will not have a paint along, but I will have it on Wednesday. Again, we're switching things around because on Thursday, I'm flying to New York to see the AWS show. And I'll be there in New York City at the Sal Gumdi Club and watching the demonstration that um, Mari's giving, I think, or Marzi. But um, yeah, so I'll be there. So on Thursday, I'll be in the air at the time. And so um, I might be doing the paint along on Wednesday. So look for it in my newsletter on Tuesday. And we'll see you on Wednesday. And then I'm sure there's going to be nothing on Sunday, next Sunday, because that's when I'm coming back. So next Sunday, um, we'll be on the plane. So maybe I can do something from the plane on the way back because it's an early flight on Sunday. And so I think, I think, but um, I won't be able to do something for you guys next Sunday. So again, enjoy, enjoy your week and I will see you on Wednesday. All right. Bye-bye.